What's going on swim fans? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five biggest mistakes that swimmers make in freestyle. Whether you're a beginner swimmer or a more veteran, I guarantee you're gonna learn something in this video. So make sure you watch until the very end. In this video, I'm not only gonna break down what the biggest mistakes are, why they matter, but also what you can do about it and how you can incorporate some of these skills into your swimming so that you can improve your technique and swim faster and smarter than ever before. If you're new to the channel, welcome to my swim pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you take your swimming to the next level and improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. Technique, training, workouts, nutrition, everything. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, join our global community, and let's get right into the video. So the first mistake is looking forward. This is the biggest mistake, and it's, it's sort of counterintuitive, but you don't need to look where you're going. Meaning, if you're swimming in a pool, the wall is not going anywhere. The pool length is fixed. So you should be looking at the bottom of the pool, you should be looking at that black or blue line. I know it's boring, I know it can get frustrating, but that's gonna help you swim the fastest, because when you swim looking forward, and we'll talk about open water in just a second, you're gonna have poor head position. Poor head position means your body's not gonna be in alignment and your legs are just gonna sink like a rock because if one thing goes up, your head, then your legs are gonna go down. You're gonna create all of this drag, all this resistance and this increased drag. Remember, water is 800 times more dense than air. It's a really thick medium, so you wanna minimize your drag as much as possible. Now, in open water, you might ask, well, how am I gonna see where I'm going? Sure, in open water, you're gonna to have to lift your head up and that you can also incorporate to take a breath as well. But even in open water and in pool swimming, if you are lifting your head up, you wanna minimize that lift so that way your legs don't sink as much. So if you're doing open water and you lift your head, you should try and keep your chin right at the surface of the water, just like butterfly. What goes up goes down. And if your head goes up, your legs are gonna go down. Also, when you look forward, it actually decreases your stroke efficiency. What I mean by not only are you increasing increasing the drag, but when you try and take a pull and your head is elevated and your legs are sinking, it's actually gonna make your pull less effective and you're gonna get less leverage. Think about trying to do a pull up, right? And if you try to do a pull up with your arms really far away from your body, it's gonna be really difficult to lift your body up. Whereas if you were just gonna be hanging straight up. And so when you swim freestyle, you wanna keep your eyes at the bottom of the pool, lift up your hips, and that's gonna help you not only increase, decrease your drag, but also increase your propulsion. Okay, so problem number two, mistake number two, is kicking too much. I know, sounds counterintuitive, right? You think, I wanna swim faster, so I'm gonna kick more. Wrong, that's not how it works. So oftentimes, swimmers don't need to kick as much as they think they do. If anything, it should actually be incorporated in the stroke through hip rotation. So I'm not saying kicking is the opposite of how you swim fast, quite the opposite. The best swimmers in the world have an amazing kick. But when you're training, unless you're doing a kick set or something that's really high speed, you should be driving with a hip rotation. Also, your amplitude shouldn't be that large. This is a huge, huge mistake swimmers make with the freestyle kick. You wanna have your amplitude, meaning the, from your toes to your heels, should be less than half a meter. You can't let your legs get really wide and you have a big scissors kick. You might be able to pull more water, but you're increasing resistance. Remember, the water is 800 times more dense than air. You wanna have a short, fast kick, point your toes, keep your legs relatively straight. And like I said, it's short and fast, but you don't wanna overemphasize it. The rotation should actually come from your hip rotation. Check out a Whiteboard Wednesday I did, how to swim perfect freestyle technique. It has over a million views here on YouTube or whatever channel you're watching it on. It's one of the most popular videos I've done. Really really breaks down all of the elements of the stroke and we talk about what you should do with your legs. Okay, moving on to number three is breathing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, it's a big mistake to breathe, so do I hold my breath, just no breathing? No, that's not really how it works. You wanna make sure when you breathe, you don't wanna lift your head up unless you're doing open water swimming. And when you take that breath, you wanna be rotating onto your side and try and keep one eye and one ear into the water. So again, the whole goal is to keep your head and pro low profile in the water. When you lift your head, similar to the first mistake, you're gonna create a lot of resistance. So make sure when you're taking your breath, you rotate to the side, it's a natural part of the stroke, and you don't really have to worry about lifting your head up and 
sinking your legs. Additionally, when it comes to actually holding your breath, you don't wanna hold it while you swim. If anything, you're exhaling slowly through your nose while your face is under the water. And then when you need to take that breath, you actually have a quick exhale and then you breathe in through your mouth. You don't wanna swim freestyle or any stroke and just hold your breath. The only time you do that is on like a breaststroke pullout or when you're doing a long underwater dolphin kick. That's a more advanced skill, but if you're just a beginner, you really need to focus on making sure that you have a slow exhale through your nose It'll improve your lung capacity and allow you to swim for a much longer continuous period of time without feeling out of breath. Let's talk about mistake number four is the crossover. This is when we're talking about the fundamentals of how you actually catch the water. So you wanna enter the water at 11 and one o'clock on the, the hands of a clock. So that's right in front of your shoulders and you should enter with your middle finger first at about a 45 degree angle to the water, about half a meter to a meter, not a meter, <laughs> half a meter in front of your shoulder. I say 18 inches uh, for, for my American friends. 18 inches in front of the shoulder in line with the shoulder. So crossover is where you actually cross the midline of your body on the arm stroke. And that's why it's so important to enter in front of your shoulder and then you rotate on the same line as that shoulder and then you pull under the water in the same line as your shoulder. So even as you rotate, you're still under the same line. Crossover is where your hand passes the midsection of your body, if you had a laser that cuts your body, and then you cross over, and this causes your body position to kind of swim like a worm. So I say don't wiggle, don't do the worm, because if you're trying to go fast in one direction, a straight line is the fastest point. If you're kind of doing like a worm, it's not really gonna work. You're not a fish. If you're a fish and you have musculature all, out, all across your body, that's how a fish swims. You, my friend, are not a fish. So make sure you're not wiggling, not swimming like a worm. If you're interested, check out some analysis videos I've done on Michael Phelps, Katie Ledecky, Caleb Dressel, and I break down the stroke. Those are some of the most popular videos as well. So make sure you check them out. We'll link a few of those in the description below. The fifth mistake is pulling with a straight arm. This is a big one. This is really what separates the, the, the faster swimmers from the really fast swimmers or the beginner swimmers from the intermediate swimmers. This is really how you get to the next level. So if you're, if you're a more advanced swimmer and you're really training hard and you're a veteran, you know, thumbs up to the veterans in the crowd, but really this is how you get to that next level. And so what happens when you pull down with a straight arm is you're actually pulling less water. It's from a from a biophysics standpoint, just you know the overall mechanics, you're actually gonna pull more water if you bend your elbow and you achieve that early vertical forearm. This is called EVF. I did a whiteboard Wednesday on this topic specifically, so make sure you check it out. But a quick summary, you're essentially trying to increase the surface area of the water that you can pull. So if you pull with a straight arm, if you think about it, you're basically pushing yourself like down. And, and really what you wanna do is you wanna pull yourself forward. So if you imagine putting your hand over a log or over a chair or something like that, you want to increase the surface area from your middle finger all the way up through your elbow and actually your entire arm. So the earlier you can get into that position, the more water you're going to pull, the faster you go. If you watch the best swimmers in the world, they are amazing at this. And if you watch a beginner swimmer, this is normally an area where it's a big mistake and they're not really proficient, but this is an area that you can actually improve in relatively quickly if you do some smart drills. One drill being the fist drill. This is, I love this drill. Maybe every other time I swim, I'll do this for a few 25s or a few 50s. You basically swim with your hands in a fist. You might think, why would you do that? You're gonna have less traction and that's the point. You're trying to decrease your resistance on your hand so you can focus on your forearm. You're gonna feel slow, that's okay. This is a great drill to do for a few 25s and then when you open up your hands, you're actually gonna feel really fast because you're gonna have the combination of pulling with an increased feel of the water on your forearm and then you're gonna have an increased feel of your hand and it's all gonna connect together. It's amazing. If you're looking for more drills, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app for not only drills but also workouts and how the drills actually incorporate into the workouts. So that's really important to make sure you're not pulling with a straight arm. Don't make that mistake, really, and all the strokes. Focus on that early vertical forearm. And now the bonus one, I know I said five mistakes, but I'm gonna give you guys a bonus one. So the bonus number six, the big mistake is not having a plan. So if you just go to the pool and you're just gonna swim or you go to a workout in a structured group and you've got a coach watching you and you just go through the motions, that's a huge mistake. Every time you swim is an opportunity 
to improve upon yourself, to improve something. It could be your streamline, it could be your technique, your kick, your underwaters, your breath control. So if, uh, two scenarios, let's say you already swim in a team, you've got a coach and you're following coach's workout, that's awesome. Make sure you're focusing on something because time is our most valuable asset. So don't lose the opportunity that you have in the pool to work on something that you can only do in the pool. No matter how strong you get in the weight room, no matter how much mental training you do, you only have so much time in the water. So make sure you're focusing on something and you continuously develop that skill over and over. It's a big mistake when you just go through the motions. Now let's say you're swimming on your own and you are your own coach. Not to worry, check out the My Swim Pro app because you can get a personalized training program and you can follow that and by following a progression in a series of workouts like you would as if you had a coach, as if you had a team, that's how you really start to develop those skills. So if you're looking for drills, technique, workouts, and training plans like a six week plan to improve your mile time or a improve eight weeks to improve the individual medley or maybe you wanna go just from the couch and you wanna go from couch to 1K. We have all these different training programs so make sure check them out in the My Swim Pro app, available for iOS and Android. And make sure you check out some other videos that I've done that talk about technique, training, dry land, and nutrition, because here at My Swim Pro, it's all about helping you improve your performance and health, both in and out of the water. So check out the My Swim Pro app. And also, if you're interested, I just launched a book. It's called Swim Like a Pro. It's amazing. Make sure you check it out, linked in the description below. And if you're not already in our VIP Facebook group, it's called My Swim Pro Global Community, check it out. It is 100% free to join, and you will join over 10,000 swimmers from over 100 countries who are passionate about taking their swimming to the next level. So if you wanna be surrounded by like-minded people, make sure you check out that group. As always, let me know what you think in the comments and happy swimming.